Hello everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve one of the medium problems from this afternoon's leak code contest, number of pairs of interchangeable rectangles. This problem isn't too bad, but we do need to know a tiny bit of math related to combinations. So we are given n rectangles and for each rectangle we're given its width and its height. Now we're also given something called, you know, the width to height ratio, which is basically the width divided by the height decimal division, not integer division. And we want to return the number of pairs of interchangeable rectangles, where an interchangeable rectangle is basically a rectangle that has the same ratio, this type of ratio, as another rectangle. So it's best understood with an example, and this first example they give us is actually a really good example of illustrating exactly what this problem wants us to do. So in this case, every single one of these rectangles has the exact same ratio. Why is that? Because let's take a look at the first one. Width divided by height is 4 divided by 8. That's half, right, or 0.5. And that the exact same is true for all of these, right? 3 divided by 6 is 0.5. 10 divided by 20 is 0.5. 15 divided by 30 is also 0.5. So all of these are interchangeable rectangles, right? So it's pretty easy to, you know, determine if a rectangle is interchangeable or not. We can just take the width divided by the height and then, you know, keep track of how many uh, rectangles we have that have the exact same ratio. We can do that pretty easy, easily uh, with a hash map, right? But in this case, we have four interchangeable rectangles and they wanted to ask us what's the number of pairs of interchangeable rectangles we could make. And in this case, it's six. So if you got stuck in this problem, you probably were wondering how can you mathematically calculate this six, right? In this case, it's six, right? But what if we had 10 rectangles that were interchangeable? Then how would we calculate the number of pairs we could create? It definitely wouldn't be six, right? How could we calculate it? Well, they're basically, when they say pairs, they're basically asking us how many combinations we can create from this. In this case, we have four, right? How many combinations of size two can we make? And it's pretty easy, but it's also pretty easy to forget. So we have four rectangles, right? These four. So we want to create a combination of two, right? So how many choices do we have when we choose the first one? We have four choices, right? There's four available to us. Okay, so if we pick one of them, right, we put it in this spot, then we have three choices now, right? Yep. So... Uh, so then we have three choices for the second spot. So then would it be four times three, which is 12? No, because what we did by doing this is we actually calculated how many permutations we could create, right? Because, uh, you know, the, the basically what we did was said that the position that we put the rectangle in matters, but that's not what we care about, right? We care about the number of pairs, which is combinations, not permutations, right? So when we calculate this 12, we're actually then going to divide it by two. Two, we get this two from the size of the combination, right? There's two spots. So we're dividing it by two to say because we don't want to get duplicates. By dividing it by two, we basically eliminate all the duplicates. And in this case, you know, half of them are going to be duplicates. Just to illustrate that, let me just kind of show you. Let's say we had four rectangles, A, B, C, D. We have four choices uh, of where to put the first one, right? We could put an A in the first one. And then we have three choices of what we could put in the second spot, right? It could be a B, it could be a C, it could be a D, right? And then uh, you know, the next choice, we could put a B here, right? And then if we do put a B here, then we have three choices of what we could put in the second spot, right? We could put an A, but notice how if we do put an A here, this is a duplicate, right? It's a duplicate because we have an A. We, we previously had an A and a B, so having a B, A is a duplicate. So that's the reason why we're, you know, taking the size of the number of uh, rectangles we have four, uh, multiplying it by this value four minus one, which is three, and then dividing it by two because we want to get rid of all the permutations. We want to get rid of all the duplicates. And so that's pretty much all you need to know to solve this problem. The overall time complexity is just going to be big O of n because we're just going to have to iterate through the entire list of rectangles. And just in case you forgot from your math, the more generic way in this case, what we're basically doing is let's say, you know, in this case we had four, let's say it was a generic number like n, right? And we want to choose uh, combinations of two in this case, but let's say instead we wanted to choose a combination of size k. How many combinations of size k could we make from a set of n uh, numbers? The generic formula for that is n factorial divided by n minus k factorial uh, 
times k factorial also in the denominator. This is the generic version. So in this case, we had four uh, choose two, right? Combinations of size two. So if we plug that into this formula, we get four factorial divided by four minus two factorial, uh, which is, this is just two factorial, right? So let's put that here, two factorial, and then k is also two factorial. Um, and then this evaluates to basically uh, a two factorial itself is just a two. A four factorial divided by a two factorial basically cancels some of it out. So this th this portion is going to become four times three. So we get rid of this and get rid of this. And then the two factorial just evaluates to two. So you can see this is you know exactly what I showed you earlier. Uh, this is just the formal way to do it. But I was kind of explaining the intuition behind this formula itself. But we probably went on too long with the math. So let's go ahead and jump into the code now. Okay, so diving into the code, remember we're going to keep track of the ratios with a hash map. So in this case, the key is going to be the ratio itself, the width divided by the height, and the value of the hash map is going to be the actual count. So the number of rectangles that have this ratio. So now we're just going to go ahead and iterate through the input uh, array of rectangles. So let's get uh, the widths and the heights, and let's just increment the count each time we see one of these. So in Python, at least, there's an easy way to do it by just saying one plus count dot get uh, whatever had you know the this the exact same ratio. And if it didn't exist in the hash map yet, we can we can choose to return a default value of zero. Uh, so, you know, this is how I like to do it. Some people in Python just like to initialize this into a default dict, uh, but, you know, you can do it however you want. So, and then moving on, so now we actually want to know the number of pairs of the same ratio. So initially we'll set that result to zero, and then we'll just iterate through every count in our hash map, right? Uh, so we can say count dot. Uh, values so that'll just return the list of values in our hash map and then we can iterate through them and remember the formula is gonna be and actually before we even get into the formula uh, we want to make sure that this count is actually greater than one because if it's one then we can't really create any pairs of course right so you know one is not enough to create a pair so as long as it's greater than one then we can add to our result that formula i was talking about so the count multiplied by the count minus one and then taking that and then dividing it by two so that's you know that's pretty much the math of this problem but after we're done with that we can go ahead and return the result and that's all there is to it i'll run it to make sure that it works and scrolling down, as you can see below, it was accepted. Uh, maybe there's a more efficient solution or something, but this does the trick. If there is a better solution, feel free to let me know in the comments. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.